the year is 62,000 BC. At a land that one day will become today's Spain, a Neanderthal one day looked around, grabbed some colorful materials that could be used to make some marks on a solid surface that will be resistant to time and made the first cave paintings that we know of. In that moment they could have never guessed that we'll be referring to them as the first painter in the history of humankind. They also couldn't have thought that 64,000 years later people will share thousands and tens of thousands of artworks on the internet every day. Dear listener, if you looked around recently on the internet you might have seen countless of these works and maybe it even crossed your mind that these were all made by someone, by another human being. Somebody spent years learning and practicing before their work reached to you through the endless bit clouds. Someone who one day took a tool into their hand and said that they are going to create an artwork with that. Someone like me. Hey, let's pause it for a second. I wanted to say that originally I made this video in Hungarian and then I decided to dub over my own voice. I hope that it won't be way too annoying to listen to and with that out of the way, let's continue the video. Welcome everyone, my name is Lazar Sylvester but I usually use the name Sylvester Lazarus on the internet because if a native English speaker tried to read my name they'd most likely got stuck at the second letter. I am an artist and I make digital paintings and sometimes videos. And I am making this video for those who don't know what digital paintings are and how exactly they are made. It happened to me countless times that somebody asked me what exactly do I do. And when I told them they only had a whole bunch of new questions to me. I usually just say that I make digital illustrations and that one day I want to do this full time. But what is a digital illustration? What is a digital painting? An artwork that was created on a digital device, in my case on a personal computer. While I was speaking a whole line of pictures showed up beside me and while they are different to one another they have one thing in common. I made them with a digital drawing tablet. If I want you to completely understand it I'll have to start at the beginning but before everything else I wanted to say that I'm going to split this video into three big chapters. In the first chapter I'm going to broadly show you what this thing is, how it works and what tools I'm using. In the second chapter I'm going to make a picture from scratch and step by step show you the whole creation process. And in the third chapter I'm going to answer a few frequently asked questions about this topic. So let's start from the beginning. I suppose that everyone who has ever used a PC with a Windows operating system is familiar with this little program called Paint and they've at least tried it. In IT class or on your uh, old 2004 PC. It's a cute little program and you can goof around in it. You can make these little paintings in it. Uh, here's an example what I make in less than 3 minutes. Altogether it's a really basic program that uh, has a lack of really usable tools to be honest. I can't honestly say bad things about it. I also used it a lot when I was little. It was just simply fun and uh, if someone has a smartphone or a tablet or anything they usually come with some sort of built-in art program that is already on them. It's obviously something that you can give to a child and they are just going to draw a little sun. And if the kid is a little older they are going to make something more challenging like a cat or something. And of course if you want to make something more serious then you have to pick up some more serious art program. I've been using this program called Photoshop for some time that is used for editing photos by default but uh, in, you can also paint in it and in the recent years the developers put in more effort so it can be used properly for this. And the one I'm using right now is an open source program named Krita. There are many more art programs but right now I don't want to go into what are these or which one is better than the others. And of course they are not only for PC, you have these for Android or iOS etc. The another important part of the equation is the digital drawing tablet. I'm using this device. It is a 1 by Wacom M and don't confuse it with Wacom 1 because that's a different device, it just has a similar name. 
and the another one is my old, my very first tablet, that is a Wacom Intuos Draw S, that is a smaller tablet than the other one. And here's an A4 exercise book, so you can see how it compares to them. The old one is like an A5 paper and the new is barely smaller than an A4. And here is the pen that we'll be using to draw on the surface of these drawing tablets. And now you can see how Krita looks from the inside and how I make these little spots on my virtual canvas using my regular computer mouse. But you have to quickly realize that this is not quite comfortable and it's really not sustainable on a longer period of time and that's when the drawing tablet comes in because all I have to do is hold my pen above the surface. And now you can see that I can use it to navigate inside the program just as before because this thing was meant to replace your mouse but that's not all. The magic starts when I actually touch this. And now you can see that I'm not only replacing my clumsy mouse movement, this device also senses how hard I'm pressing against it so I can make less transparent or thicker lines based on what sort of brush I'm using and I'm going to talk about the brushes in one minute. Okay, I can show it now, but I had to first reorganize my whole table and I still don't know where should I put my microphone, so just a second. And I just wanted to show you these, these hand studies I made from photos. I've been practicing lately how to make more realistic hands because it was always one of my weaknesses. I've been thinking uh, where should I start, what should I show you first, but I started talking about brushes just a minute ago. I'm just going to go quick with this because it's something that I could make a separate video about. Every one of these programs have these brushes, these little tools that you can use to create spots on your little virtual canvas. There are a whole bunch of these and every program uses them a little differently and what you can see now are brushes that I made myself. Much better said I just put them together from the tools that this program has built in. There are many many little settings about brushes and for example I just took this one and I set it so the harder I press against my tablet the thicker line it will make. I can also make it so every brush stroke is going to be a little different color. Oh, I messed it up a little. There I wanted to do this, that it varies the colors that I put down a little bit. And obviously everyone is going to work and use these tools differently. Everyone has to figure out themselves what they can use the best. For example, there are people who find these airbrush tools the most comfortable to use. And at the same time, there are others who much prefer these really textury brushes instead. Like every program, every user is different. I really don't want to go into details because I could talk about them all day long about how they work. I just wanted to show you how they work in practice. I also use these tools to make my pictures and I just wanted to scribble something for you. Well, here's a little marble, or what on earth is this? Here you are. And these things here are my layers. How this program works? Imagine that you have an infinite number of glass plates that you can paint on and you can stack these on top of each other. So if I choose another color, I can just scribble here and it is not going to affect my original picture. So I can just grab and move this around. And if I don't like the order, I can also switch that up. So right now this little marble sketch is on top of the other one. I can also change the layer modes and for example now I can make this so it looks like, uh, not really like paint, but it looks more like if I just lighted up this canvas with a really bright light. I can use another setting so it will create these dark shadowy parts. 
and uh, this is the exact same color I just changed the settings so the program is using it in a different way applies it in a different way to my canvas the another important thing that I will do after I figure out how to do this with one hand is that I can uh, resize this and I can move it around I can also cut my pictures apart so if I say that I need this part I can just move it away and if I want it to be bigger I can resize it so it's now bigger than the other half obviously these are things that uh, cannot really be done in traditional mediums but of course you have to learn to use these things but in general these are the tools that you can use in this program obviously if I wanted to show every single aspect of how this creation process works that couldn't really be done in one video maybe not even in a single channel it would be a topic for multiple channels this is about all what I wanted to say about the program now you will see how it all works in practice when I'm just not scribbling around like this but when I actually use these tools to make things like these hands and yes I will made all these with these tools that I showcased okay now I'm going to start with a sketch I still don't know what it will be but once we start it we will just find out how it will look and what it will become in the end if any of you ever learned how to draw these steps are going to be familiar obviously I'm not going to show you the whole process so what I'm going to do I'm going to speed up the really boring parts and uh, make a voiceover afterwards or maybe I just speak in the breaks between sessions I still haven't I'm still not entirely sure how I want to do this Oh, and uh, I just wanted to mention that my hands are literally shaking from the recording going on, so I'm not sure how the end result is going to reflect that, so if you see that I'm being clumsy quite a lot, then that is the main reason behind it. Well, it's starting to get a proper shape, but uh, we will still have to figure out what we want to do with this picture. You know what, let's turn this character into a Jedi. I don't know, that was the first thing that came into my mind, that he's going to be a Jedi, he's going to have a lightsaber, the lightsaber is going to lit his face up, and he's going to have some sort of Jedi robes as well. Something uh, not too complicated that uh, is known by many people, so let's turn him into a Jedi. I still don't know how I really feel about this sketch but one thing that is certain is that those arms are really bad doesn't matter how hard I try I won't be able to figure out how someone is holding a sword so let's look up a quick reference picture for that I found this picture about this person holding that katana so this is about how it should look by the way I can already hear that you are typing that uh, wait for a second isn't art supposed to be about creating something original every time and uh, not using any pictures for help it is something that comes up quite often and uh, my answer to this there is absolutely no one who knows how every single thing in the world looks and those who don't use any help those who don't use any reference pictures for stuff like how you are supposed to hold a sword well that is going to reflect on the end product I regularly start a picture like this with looking up references for like every single element on the picture and I make a little collage out of those pictures and I can use that for help. 
Of course I never copy pictures because of obvious reasons, I only use them as references as visual help for me. And this is something where many people just don't know the difference. Let's see what we can do with this little help and uh, the very first thing I'm going to sketch on top of this thing for you to see. These shoulders are standing in a really weird angle and the arms they just look like they were broken off and glued back. And uh, this is about how it should look instead. So you can see the difference between these two little sketches. So let's quickly fix this thing. This is roughly what I wanted, so it's closer to reality now. And let's add a new element to this picture, the robes of the Jedi, these iconic brown Jedi robes. Now keep your eyes open because I'm going to do something cool. I'm going to erase most of this old rough sketch and on top of it we can make the second the much more precise sketch. This is something that I showed you briefly earlier, but now I'm showing it in practice. Because I work digitally, I can now modify parts of the sketch without drawing parts of it again, so I can move this face into the right position. This is a mistake that I almost always make, that I make the distance between the eyebrows and the bottom of the nose way too short. This is something that we can really easily fix now with simply moving around these parts that are not in the right place. And this is something that we can do later on, but it's always easier at the start when we are still in the sketch phase. Later you just have to be much more careful when doing this. And now we reach the point when I have to start sketching out the hands. It will most likely be a little more painful process and in the meantime I had this thing in mind because just a moment ago I made a fool out of myself in many people's eyes with looking up how you should hoard a sword. Because of that I'm going to make these hands completely from imagination. I've been practicing how to draw hands lately so this is something that shouldn't be that hard. You will see how it all turns out, because uh, right now it just looks absolutely disgusting. I'll need to resize it in a second. Well, right now this sketch is uh, not really great, but uh, it will be good for our little uh, demonstration. In the meantime, I'm going to make a really, really basic background to this picture. Something with this greenish color. It's like a little forest or a humid cave environment. Something like that. I filled in the whole layer. Yes, and the fog around our character is going to be a little more lit and the parts that are further away are going to slowly descend more and more into the darkness. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the base colors of the character, the colors of the skin, the colors of the clothing, the colors of the hair, everything. This is going to be the base of everything on the picture because right now I'm putting these colors underneath our original sketch layer. And just for a moment I'm trying to find a right color for the skin. 
this will do and after we are done with the base colors I'm going to color in the whole sketch as well. And after that I'm going to continue the whole picture on top of everything we have. So the sketch is not going to be turned off at a certain point, it is going to be built into the final picture. Now we have all the base colors, we're going to start adding the shadows. Oh, let me just rename this thing. So now that we have the base colors, I am adding the shadows one by one. I don't want to go much into the details how this whole thing works, but most importantly... Sorry, I'm just being a little clumsy. I'm trying to find a color that is going to be right for the first shadows. I had to modify this brush a little bit, sorry for the inconvenience. Clumsiness is just part of the process. And uh, now you will see, I'm going to create my very first layer of shadows. Right now I'm painting this character like uh, he's being lit inside the studio with a bunch of really soft studio lamps where only those shadows are going to be visible that are being casted by the facial features themselves and once on the darkest parts of the face like the bottom of the chin and the eye sockets and whatnot. And then we are going to progress further and you will see how, but right now I'm only painting these little local shadows everywhere. Okay, I am done with the local shadows, I even added some additional colors that I was missing and now I'm going to create my second layer of shadows. This time I'm going to add much bigger shadows, like literally shadows that are applied to much bigger parts of this character. This shadow I am going to add now, sorry I'm just being clumsy once again. So this shadow is going to have a little green tint because this shadow from the environment is going to faintly recolor the darkest parts of the picture. And the lightest parts of the picture are going to be the ones that are being lit by the lightsaber. Right now I'm trying to create uh, the darkest shadows in some areas. Now after the shadows we are going to add the lights, especially the light of this really bright lightsaber. This is going to be our main light source and the one that is lighting up the character's face. So right now I'm going to add all these brighter spots to the picture. Now a little detail for the lightsaber, let's give this blade a little glow with this really nice blue color. This effect is going to be really important because of the whole foggy nature of this environment like this Dagobah system kind of planet that we are currently at, so this glow is going to affect the fog quite a lot.
Originally, my intention was that the picture is going to end at the bottom of this character's hand, so it's going to be cut off here. But let's be honest, uh, this looks quite bad, so what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to extend his whole body at this part. I'm going to go through the same steps really quick right now, and uh, of course this is something that you could uh, add at any point of the picture, even if this was completely finished the way it was, you could still add stuff like this, but uh, right now it is just much more easier to do, so that's why I'm doing it now. So one more thing that I want to add to this picture, better set to the base of the picture because it will require much more work. I'm going to add a selection and paint everything outside of it black and then it's going to be blurred out. You will see what I'm talking about just in a moment. This will create the effect that uh, around the character everything is much much lighter and as we are going further from him everything is going to get much darker. This is really a basic background when you don't want to create a whole environment, just add something easy that makes the whole picture much more spectacular. Okay, I took a little break and in the meantime the sun is down now, I hope I am still visible on the camera picture. Now we reach the point in the creation process when it's only the really boring and long detailing phase that remains. As I'm speaking right now I've already finished this picture and you're only re looking at the recording, so this is not real time for me now. This is something that cannot really be made interesting, what I'm doing here for hours is just working on small little details. I didn't want to show this step by step, I'm not even sure that it can be effectively shown step by step. So instead what you can see in the background right now is the entire remaining process, only it is sped up. Then I'm going to talk about the finished picture when we reach that point. But until then, while you are looking at the sped up process, I'm going to answer a few questions. So I've written down a few frequently asked questions about this topic. Now I'm going to give you an answer for those. The very first question that somehow always seems to come up is that how long does it take to create one of these pictures? And what I can say to that is that it always depends on that certain picture. Making this picture to this point with the commentary took me 1 hour and 22 minutes so far, but on one hand I was really rushing it and on the other hand I could have done much more and much better with this given time if I wasn't explaining things while I was painting. Making a proper sketch can take uh, pretty much anything between like 1 hour and 3 hours, I don't know, I just said something. What I usually say that making a picture with one character that is properly detailed takes something uh, between like 6 to 8 or 10 hours. At least this is how much it takes me. Speaking about a bigger picture where there are multiple characters, a detailed background, like a whole detailed uh, room for the environment of one character, that might take uh, 15 to 20 hours, but if we look at really big group pictures that might easily take more than 20 hours. This is different in every single case and it not only changes from project to project, it also changes from person to person, but overall it's not something that can be done within just a few minutes. Next question, how long does it take you to learn this and how hard it is to be learned? This is obviously something that changes from person to person, but like every other form of art, 
It takes a long time and much dedication to be learned. I dare to say that. I've been doing this since 2016, I've been learning it since then and you can see where I am. I'm sure there are people who could reach uh, my level within one year, there are others who could reach it only in 10 years. Again, it changes from person to person, the same way it applies to the traditional arts. As I said, depends. And uh, this thing ties into the next question, that uh, what is really the difference between traditional and digital art? I would say that I mostly showed you the process how a digital artwork is made, this is obviously something that uh, is different for every person, I'm saying this many times, but it's true, everyone works differently with different techniques and different tools. If you watched someone else's video about the same topic, they would say completely different things and they would show their very different process. I have never worked traditionally. Obviously, I don't know anything about the tools and I couldn't make a picture with graphite or watercolor or oil paint like I do digitally. But some pieces of a people's knowledge are universal and it's not only about knowing tools and programs, it's about uh, many other little things. Now, I could say things like anatomy, perspective, color theory, for example, if you gave crayons to an oil painter, they would have to take time to figure out how they are supposed to use that and uh, how they are different compared to those tools they are familiar with. This is something where you can adapt from one thing to the another. I am confident to say that I am never going to use any sort of traditional tools. I would much rather go into 3D modeling and animation rather than to, as I said, use any form of traditional art instead. Some people uh, downright say that it is much better to work traditionally and traditional pieces have much more value because they are harder to make. And uh, to this thing I can say that yes, technically it is harder. But it is something really similar if you said that you are not using acrylics because uh, oil paint was invented earlier. Then uh, what do you say? What is the better one? Of course there are many shortcuts in digital. Modify your pieces more easily. You can resize parts, you can move around parts, you can cut away parts. Not only with a sketch but also with a finished piece. You can use certain effects, you can colorize your pictures, like there are people who finish entire pictures in grayscale and then colorize them like how they colorize black and white photos. And of course there are still some people who say that traditional is always better because it is always harder. I'm sure that I'm going to sound quite harsh with this, but my answer to this question is that if we are ranking techniques and tools based on how hard they are, it's like ranking painkillers based on which one of them has a more bitter taste and which one is harder to swallow. Believe me when I say that no matter if you are working in traditional or digital or you will do any sort of art, it is something that you have to pour dozens and hundreds and thousands of hours into it until you reach the point where you can actually say that you are good in that thing. People also often say that if you work digitally then your work can be reproduced infinitely pretty much, while in traditional you only have one piece. But in reality you can infinitely reproduce a traditional work with scanning it or photographing it in a good quality. Then you can make infinite copies, you can make infinite prints of it, you can do canvas printing and everything, so that's it. In one way I also have to say that it's just the nature of time. Nowadays nobody bothers with having one thing that is one original. I dare to say that objectively digital is better because it's easier to use, it's easier to modify even after a piece is finished, easier to translate it into any other form. If you commission someone to make a digital artwork or you make a digital artwork for someone or for yourself, it's not going to lose value because of the fact that there is not one original while every other piece is just a copy of that. I cannot agree with the other side to any extent, 
maybe it's only my 21st century thinking but uh, this is how i look at this thing the next question is something that i briefly mentioned in the beginning that what sort of tools you need for this and how pricey those tools are First of all, I have to say that every one of these tools are different and everyone has to find the one that works the best for them. I personally use a digital drawing tablet that is connected to my PC. You can't only use this with a PC, you can also do it with a laptop. There are people who work on Android or uh, Apple tablets. There are people who work on uh, smartphones, but I'm pretty sure that their tools are not the best. But if this is something that you can access, then you don't have to. You can also start with that and you don't have to invest into a whole new setup. If you want to start the thing like I do and uh, you just go and look at the digital drawing tablets, then you will see that there are many expensive tools tablets with built-in displays like your tablet is literally a screen and you're not looking at a monitor like I do and some people prefer that because it feels much more like if you were drawing on a paper or painting on a physical canvas it is everyone's personal preference that uh, what they like more and uh, what is the tool that they can uh, most efficiently work with I really have to say that it is mostly only a matter of habit and you can work with the cheaper and smaller devices. You don't have to invest thousands of dollars into this thing for start. Obviously, if you listen to other people, they are going to have different opinions on this. But there is one thing that I really dare to say, even if I never used and I'm not familiar with most of these tools. To the question, do you actually need to buy the biggest and most expensive tools to make something actually valuable? To this question, my straightest answer is an obvious no, you don't. Not at all. Maybe it would make it easier, maybe it would be more fitting to you, maybe you could work much more efficiently with it. But to the question, do you actually need them? It is an obvious no, you don't. Hey, it's editing me again and I wanted to say that I'm going to cut the next question. So it was the question what sort of Hungarian content there is for this topic and I didn't see a point to leave it in the English version, so there you go. So the last question that I want to answer here is uh, the exact same as the previous one, only in English. Who are those creators who taught me the most, who are my personal favorites, who are the ones who inspired me the most. I'm going to list a few creators and I'm going to leave links in the description for every one of them and these are the ones who I really recommend you to check out. The person who taught me the most is Boro Dante. You also may know him as Daniel Sherekin or Boro CG from YouTube. Link to his channel in the description but I could say Marco Bucci, Stan Prokopenko. Mark Brunei, Up the Hill, Drovit Jaza from YouTube, I know that many people started learning from him, Aaron Blaze, Trent Kaniuga, I hope I'm pronouncing these names right, Peter Polak, also known as Apterus, Angel Genev, June Jensen, Adam Duff. I'm pretty sure that there are people who I would have wanted to mention, but I just forgot them. I just said a few names, what came into my mind when you asked the question, uh, who are the people who taught me the most? These are the people who I want to say. So in the meantime the picture was finished and I made some little animations. Then there was a little problem that I had. You will see. I recorded my animation process in Krita and the file ended up being corrupted so I cannot show you this. Why Open Broadcaster? I trusted you. You were the chosen one. You were meant to record what I wanted, not to create corrupted files instead. Of course, at least I have the animated versions and I added a really not complicated breath effect and an effect to the lightsaber that it flickers in the darkness a little bit. Then a simple fog effect that I made in Blender and I'm going to leave a link in the description to the tutorial that I followed to make these effects. Then I added this snowfall effect and in the end I blurred out most of these snowflakes and I only made the ones around the lightsaber sharper and more blue and that is everything. This is the final version of this artwork. 
I'm only sad that I couldn't show you the animating process because the whole recording went straight into the garbage. You were my recording software open broadcaster. I loved you. And with that horrible joke, we reach the end of this video. This is when I'm supposed to end the video with a nice conclusion, but how should I say? It's not happening because of a lack of experience. All I want to say is that I hope that there are people who enjoyed watching this video and there are people who know a little more about this topic than before. I will most likely not make any more videos in Hungarian because I want to make them in English, make uh, similar demonstrations and another sort of art videos. And Hungarian viewers, if you know anyone who makes any sort of digital art content in Hungarian, then please leave them down in the description. And I thank you for watching, have a nice day, do some art and have fun while doing that. Farewell.